Hello everyone and welcome back to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. My name is Dana, I'm a member of the education team and today I'm joined in the studio by Emily and James. James is going to be controlling what's going on behind me right here, also what might be going on in front. We'll have a number pop up in just a moment and Emily's going to be off the screen uh, out of the studio. She's actually helping out with this number. So if you are out there and you're watching live and you want to join us in this program today, I highly encourage you. We'd love to have you join us at this phone number. Now it is texting only. I have, uh, we have received a couple phone calls, but it's not set up for that. So make sure you do remember it's texting only. Texting rates do apply, standard texting rates. And uh, please check that you have adult permission to text in today. But again, that phone number right here is 562-286-1838. And hopefully we'll hear from you. I know in the last program we had so many questions and it was awesome to hear uh, all of your thoughts and observations. So go ahead and keep that coming. We'd love to hear more. Now for this program today, we are gonna be doing a craft, okay? So we're gonna be exploring different characteristics of fish, and then we're gonna throw those characteristics into a craft and create our own ocean fish. So I'm gonna give you a list of supplies and then give you a minute to go gather those. Now we're gonna take a look at our other video over here and uh, I'll lay those supplies out. So the first thing you're gonna need is a piece of paper any old printer paper will do. It can be any color. I'm going to do a white one for this one. Let's see. Nope, I'm going to do blue. So just a regular piece of color, or a piece of paper right here. All right. Now we're also going to need scissors. Okay, so make sure that you have scissors available. I'm going to have my scissors out right here. You're also gonna want either glue or tape. Now I'm gonna have to cross over the screen because my tape's on this side. Tape. All right, so you might need tape. <laughs> and then you're gonna want any other colored pencils or crayons or markers, anything that you can color and add um, details to our crafts today. So. Go ahead and get those supplies together. You might actually need two pieces of paper if you're getting really excited. My other one, I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do white for my other piece of paper so that I can color it whatever I want, all right? So once again, you need two pieces of paper. You need scissors. You need any type of coloring, so colored pencils or markers or crayons. You're gonna need tape or glue, okay? Now. While you're getting that together, we're gonna go ahead and put on a webcam of one of our exhibits, and we're gonna make some observations of the animals in here. We're focusing mainly on fish today, so let's take a look. Hmm, what, what's going on? What's this? What, what was that? What was that? Oh my gosh, do you know what that is? So that's actually, <laughs> come on out. <laughs> so this is a unicorn fish. Now, why do we call it a unicorn fish, do you think? Oh, of course. It has hooves. I'm just kidding, everyone. We call it a unicorn fish because it has this unicorn uh, horn sticking out of the top of its head. Now, why is that, I wonder? Well, it's not necessarily, uh, a lot of people are like, oh, well, one's a male and one's a female, but that's not true. Some males have it, some females have it. Um, look, it's just hanging out right here. <laughs> So we have a couple different unicorn fish species in there, uh, but what other observations can we make while this fish is, is hanging out? I'll step off the screen for you. Hmm, do you see any, <laughs> do you see any other unicorn fish? This one's kind of stealing the show. Oh, I see a shark in the background. I also see a bright orange fish kind of swimming off way over here. Do you see that? So fish can be all different colors. I see orange. Oh, I see some stripes. There's fish in the middle here. This is called a sweet lips. They have really big lips and they have polka dots. Of course, we have our bonnet, um, bonnet head shark. They have a, a different shaped head. We have some silver fish. We have some yellow fish. So my observations as I go through this uh, exhibit right here is the fact that fish can be a lot of different colors. So I'm glad we grabbed our color pencils and markers. Um, what else can we see? Well, ooh, I see a fin right over here. Do you see that? Fish need fins to move around, right? They live in water. They're not walking around on land. So imagine if a fish was out of water. 
Would it be able to f- move around very well with those fins? Probably not. But the fins are really helpful, helpful for swimming, right? So our fish are swimming around and using those fins to move. So we'll want to make sure that our fish that we create today has fins. What else? Hmm. Well, I see a lot of me- <laughs> Perfect timing. That fish right there had a mouth and it was coming right at me, right? So fish have mouths. In fact, the fish that we create today is going to have a really big mouth. And they're going to get a lot of food inside of that big mouth, okay? What else do we see? I see colors, fins, big mouths. Anything else that makes a fish a fish? <sighs> oh, how do fish breathe? Do they have lungs like you and I? Last I checked, they did not. Fish actually have gills, okay? So we can try to draw some gills onto our fish later, maybe an operculum. Now, an operculum is a special gill covering. It's like a bony plate that protects their gills, which is really important for them. Sharks, however, they don't have that. They have gill slits. You'll see five lines going down the side of their head. That's where their gills are. So fins, gills, a big mouth to catch food. What else? Hmm. Oh, fish have scales. That's right. They cover their body and they're nice and protecting. Now, like I said, friends, don't forget that we do take questions during this program or observations. Now, for example, we just got a question from Madison and Madison wants to know, what does the unicorn fish eat? Great question, Madison. Well, did you see big teeth on that, on that fish? I know it looked really big right next to me, but it's actually quite a small fish. They don't have big teeth. They're not really meat eaters. They are instead algae eaters. So they like to swim around and they pick little bits of algae off of the rocks and the corals. And so sometimes we can actually see them exhibit that behavior inside of our trap reef gallery. And you can see them picking at our rock work. So they're eating the algae that grows. Awesome. That was a great question, Madison. Are you ready? Do you have your craft supplies? All right, come on over. We're going to do some work. All right, I'm going to move my craft supplies off. Now, the first thing that we're going to do today is we need to take one of our piece of pa- pieces of paper and turn it into a square, okay? Now, the way you're going to do that, if you're holding a regular uh, printer paper, you're going to take one corner of it and you're going to fold it up until the line. Let me see if I can kind of uh, oops, adjust the lighting here. A little bit of a glare. All right, so we're gonna kind of take this and line it up so that it's perfectly flat along the edge. All right, then we're gonna fold that down. Now, this little extra pit, uh, bit hanging off right there, we're gonna want to remove that. So, take your scissors, be very careful with your scissors in hand, and you're gonna cut along that line right there. So again, what we're doing is we're just turning our eight and a half by 11 piece of paper into an eight and a half by eight and a half square. We're cutting off that little extra bit. All right, there we go. So now we're gonna open that up and I want you to hold it like a diamond. All right, so one point is pointed towards you. One point is pointed away from you and the crease is going down the middle. All right, now take one corner and you're gonna line it up along the edge here. There you go, right up into that other uh, fold, right along that crease line. You're kind of making what's gonna look like an ice cream cone. So there's one side, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So we're gonna, there we go. And take that, fold it up, and nice and straight. If it's not straight, it's okay. It just means that your final fish product will be a little bit wiggly. All right, how's that look? Does it kind of look like an ice cream cone? What do you think? I think it looks pretty good, right? Maybe a kite also. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do, and this is a little weird, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna fold it just into a regular triangle again. All right, now this time, We're gonna take scissors. This is the folded edge, okay? We're gonna take scissors and on the folded edge, we're gonna cut from the fold up to that other crease at a little bit of an angle as if you're perpendicular, which means you're you're nice and straight like a T 
along that line. So let's check it out. We're going to go one and then every little bit all the way along the fold here. Now you're just going from the folded edge to this crease right here. Okay. And it looks like we've got some more questions coming in. I love that. Micah wants to know how many unicorn fish species are there? Great question, Micah, because unicorn fish, like I said, kind of encompasses a whole bunch of different species. They all have um, similarities. They all have that unicorn nose or horn, but they all look a little bit different. So the answer to that is that there's roughly 20 species, but here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we only have uh, three, I believe. All right, friends, so we're still going to keep cutting along this edge here till about mm, there. Okay, we're not going to go all the way. We want to leave a little bit in the front. Now we're going to open up our piece of paper back into that square. So once again, one point towards you, one point away, and the creases are all kind of poking up. All right. Now all of a sudden we have this really, really beautiful kind of cutting work right there. Now Brianna wants to know, do fish have bones in their tails? Great question, Brianna. So fish have a skeleton that works their way all the way through their body. And in their, in their fins, which their tail is actually like a fin, they have something called spines and rays. And the, the spines can be bony. It's what gives it that structure. Uh, the rays tend to be softer, more like cartilage, like you and I have in our ears. It's a little bit softer. Now, Noah wants to know how many kinds of fish are in that exhibit in Big Trap. That's a great question, Noah, right here, because if you were looking... There's a lot of fish in here, right? And that's because this is our largest exhibit here at the aquarium. This exhibit holds over 350,000 gallons of water, okay? Now, inside we have over, uh, we have a, around 1,000 species. I say around because sometimes we have a little more, sometimes we have a little less. And then uh, I think that's home to over 100 spe different species or so. So 1,000 fish. I said species, didn't I? A thousand fish and a hundred species, give or take. All right, let's jump back to our craft right here. So what we're going to do now is with our cuts right here, at the other end, you're going to want to curve the nose, okay? This is going to be the nose of your fish. Now I'm going to try it um, let's see, that's going to be really hard, so I'm going to open it back up. i got to think about how I want to do this. I'm going to open it up, and then I'm going to take my scissors and just kind of whoop, cut that point off. Now, you're welcome to leave your point on. Now that we've gotten this far, I'm going to hold up our example and show you what exactly we're looking for here. All right, so this is what our final product's going to look like. Ta-da! So it's going to be a fish that can move up and down and swim. So you can see we've already done a lot of it. We've got these cuts all set up and ready to go. We're working on the mouth. Okay, this is going to be the really big mouth right here. And then um, we're going to add fins and a tail. And we're going to add a bottom part to this mouth. And then we just get to color and see what happens. So you can have the nose of your fish look however you want it to. But I gave it a nice little round one. So what you're going to do now is you're going to flip it so it's like this. So you're folding in, okay? Those two little outside pieces that don't have cuts, you're going to want to put them together, one on top of the other, okay? Just like that. Now, if you have glue, go ahead and glue these two pieces together. And if you have tape, go ahead and grab a piece of tape and tape them together. I'm gonna to tape them right along the top here. All right, fold it over. And I might put a little bit of tape on the edge as well. Let's see, but I don't want to tape up one of those cuts. So we're gonna do it just a little bit like that. And it'll fold over just a little. I might have to cut that tape, but I'm but um, there we go. All right. So now we've got a 3D fish body. Do you see that? 3D fish body. Check it out. How cool. 
So this is where we get to get really creative with what our fish looks like. If you want to flatten it out a little bit, you can take colored pencils or crayon or a marker. And this is where you get to draw your fish's eyes. Okay, let's see. We're going to do a big eye right here. Oops. Big eye right there. And I'm going to put a little sparkle in my fish's eye and color it in. Now, your eyes don't have to be black. Your eyes can be green. They can be blue. They can be purple. You can color this fish whatever color you want it to be. Now, if you want, you can think of where your fish might live. Does it live in a coral reef habitat like our tropical reef gallery that we showed you? Because what did those fish look like? They were very colorful. We're going to do another eye over here. That one's a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Whee! It's hard to get things the same size. All right. Another little gleam across the top there. We're going to color that in. Okay. Now, I'm going to add some eyelashes. I'm going to add, let's see, I'm going to add a little bit of eye shadow. Give her, I'm going to make a little green shading. How about that? All right, I like it. Now, we have part of a mouth, but it's kind of lacking the bottom half, okay? So, that leftover paper from before you're going to line it up to make sure that it fits, okay, just like that. And then you're going to create the bottom part of your fish's mouth. Now, this is what I did earlier. I just kind of held it up and then I cut like right along the edge there. So I went like this. Make sure you can see me. I went boop. And then on the other side, I went, let's see, that's even. Boop, good enough. We can always make it fit. And so now I have a piece that's going to more or less fit inside my fish's mouth. But you want to curve this one as well. Wee. All right. Now the same thing, you're going to take tape or glue. And you're just going to tape it or glue it into the bottom part of your fish's mouth. Now I'm going to go like this. I'm going to take my tape, put it right like that. And then I'm just going to reach in until it tapes on to the bottom. So now, all of a sudden, our fish has that really big mouth that I mentioned. Ah, uh, all right. So, what are we missing? Let's go back to that trap reef video and see what we've got. What else does a fish need? Okay, so we got the big mouth to eat with, right? We got the eyes. We're gonna be adding color as we go, right? What else might a fish need? Remember, there's a couple things we talked about. I want you to think about those again while I answer these questions. So Ethan wants to know, why do fish have to stay in the water? Ethan, that's a really great question. Why don't fish just get out and walk around on land? Well, it has to do with what they use to breathe, like we mentioned. So, uh, and of course, a couple different things. Uh, fish... Right, you and I breathe with lungs, but fish have gills. So lungs are able to take oxygen out of the air around us. Gills can't do that. Gills have to be wet. They, they take oxygen from the water around the fish. So um, kind of like how we can't breathe underwater, fish can't breathe in air, right? Kind of a weird concept. Um, Owen wants to know, how do fish move in the water and do fish have brains? Really good questions, Owen. So how do they move? Well, let's take a look. Hmm. How do you see these fish moving? Oh, this one's perfect. Check out the back tails of these animals. So we call those the back, the tail fin, right? That's a fin. This one's really big. See how it's moving it? So those fins help the animal move through the water. Are any of you swimmers at home? How do you move in water? Do you kick your legs? Do you use your arms? Yeah, so we have to use our arms and legs, but the fish don't have those. Their fins are much better at moving them through the water than our arms and legs are. And then Owen's next question was, do fish have brains? Hmm. 
They do. Now, depending on the species, they can be a little bit bigger or smaller, but fish do have brains. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Now, it looks like Owen's joining us from Loma Vista Elementary. So if there's other Loma Vista Elementary's, uh, elementary students out there, hello, everyone, and welcome. Now, we're going to jump back over to our craft here and add some fins. But while I do that, I'm going to answer Connor's question of what is the largest species of fish? And Emily, who's taking her questions, also drew me a beautiful mola mola. Now, a mola mola is the ocean sunfish. I'm going to clean up my little craft mess, and um, James can put that on the background here. So this is a mola mola right here, and it's really, really big. All right, from uh, fin tip to fin tip, this fish can be over 11 feet in length, and they can weigh over 2,000 pounds. Isn't that crazy? But there's a, another fish that could be considered bigger. It just depends if you're grouping them in together. So there are sharks, which are cartilaginous fish, just like our ears. Sharks have really soft, flexible skeletons. And then there are bony fish. So the mola mola is the largest bony fish, but the whale shark is the largest cartilaginous fish. Both are fish, they're just a little bit different. So the whale shark can reach over 40 feet in length. Pretty cool, huh? All right, those were great questions. Now we're gonna jump back here. I cleaned up all my little scraps. What we're going to do now is we're going to take that second piece of paper, okay? And this is where you can get really creative. We're going to create fins for our fish. Just like we were talking about how they help those animals move, I want you to decide if your fish has a kind of broom-shaped tail like that. Is it going to have a forked tail? Like, let's see, this might take a couple more cuts. Like that. Okay. What do you want your tail to look like? Now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it kind of like a dolphin tail. Even though I know I'm making a fish. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go kind of from the outside like that. And like that. Now you want to leave a little bit of space to glue it onto your fish. Okay. Ooh, that's really bright and hard to see, huh? Is that a little bit better? Then I'm going to cut it there. And then I'm going to add a little bit more detail right here. We're going to go like that. Kind of right in there. And then again, we're going to go do, 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 do. All right. Now... We're going to put it on the side. You can do this a couple different ways. So it can go on the bottom, but fishtails typically go side to side. So I'm going to put mine on the side like this. All right. I'm going to take a little piece of tape. I'm going to tape it on the very last little notch we made. It's going to go right there. Bum, bum, bum. Perfect. So now if I were to hold my fish up, you can see the tail on the side, right? All right, but what other fins do fish have? Do they only have a tail fin? No, fish also have, we're going to make a pectoral fin. Those are the ones that are going to come out on the side like you can see right here, okay? So we just made the tail. These are the pectoral fins. You can make a dorsal fin if you want, all right? And then there's some other fins on the bottom. We've got our pelvic fins and our anal fins. Now that might be hard to put all those fins on our fish, but we can do our best. So let's make some pectoral fins. Hmm. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a little, almost like a leaf. All right. That's what my pectoral fins are going to look like. What are your pectoral fins going to look like? Remember, they don't have to look like mine. You can make your fish look however you want. Oop, mine's going to have a little fin that's a t bit tinier. That's okay. So again, I'm going to take these fins and either a little bit of tape or some glue. And we're, I'm going to tape mine kind of on the bottom right before it starts to bend. And it's going to be hanging off just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other one on the other side. I guess they could kind of go on the side there too. All right. So like that, it's going to go on the bottom, underneath. Ta-da! 
All right, my friends. So, just like I promised, we got the big mouth. Ah! We've got the pectoral fins on the side here. We've got the tail fin hanging off the back. And if you hold on to your fish, it can be nice and, and floppy. All right, so it's got some movement going on. Woo-hoo! All right, now we still have colored pencils or markers or crayons, anything you have, uh, and you can color your fish to look however you want. I might add some scales to my fish. Do you wanna try that? All right, let's try it. Now to do that, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a colored pencil and I'm gonna kind of flatten my fish a little bit, which is really hard to do. And I'm gonna go like this, boop. My face needs to move. Thank you, fish face. And I'm going to add some scales. It's going to look like this. It's going to go um, boop, boop, boop. I'm going to add scales along the side here. Okay. Now I'm only going to do it on every other one or we'd be here all day. How's that look? All right. What about the other side? This time I'm just going to take my fish and I'm going to kind of flatten it to the other side. And we're going to go... Same thing, boop, boop, boop. All right, what color are you using? Does your fish look the same? Now, after this, I would love to see pictures of the fish uh, crafts that you all created at home. So don't forget, you can take a picture of your craft and send it into that phone number that we'll throw up on the bottom of the screen here. Gonna sharpen my folds a little bit. There we go. All right, so I kind of pinched my fish back in shape. So here is my final fish right here. But again, you can throw all the colors on there you want. If you wanna add, uh, if you have ribbon, you can add ribbon. If you have craft feathers, you can add feathers. You can add whatever you want to your fish. And then send us a picture of it at 562-286-1838. We'd love to see what you created with us today. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go hang this up on my desk so I always get to remember craft time with you. Now we do have a couple last questions that I wanna answer before we end the program. Um, Owen wants to know, do all fish live in coral? Oh, and that's a great question. Let's see if we can get another habitat on the screen and see if there are any fish there. Let's see. What do you think? Do you see coral in here? I don't. I see a lot of rocks, okay, and I see some algaes growing. But I do see fish. So even though there's no, no coral, there is still fish. So yes, Owen, fish, um, or no, I should say, not all fish live in coral. Fish can live in other habitats as well. Now, let's see, Alex wants to know, can you have a shark as a pet? Alex, I love the enthusiasm about ocean life, but I want you to think about some of the challenges that might come with keeping a shark as a pet. What do you think? Well, sharks can get pretty big. The smallest one is only about the size of my hand, but they like to live in pretty deep water. And it's hard to make a exhibit that ha or a, a tank for your pet shark that has really deep water. Um, the other ones can get really big. So this is our shark lagoon exhibit. And it's really, really big. You can see we have multiple sharks swimming around, but it's bigger than your swimming pool at home, okay? Um, it's bigger than, uh, it might, it's not quite as big as a pool at like a, a high school or something like that, but it's a really big exhibit. And so there's lots of fish swimming around, lots of sharks. But what else do you notice? Is it just like a tank that you might have at home? Ooh, shark coming in, right? No, what else? Well, sharks like to eat a lot of food. So you have to make sure that you have the right diet for them. They're swimming around all the time. Um, they're, they're, they're needing nutrients that allow them to have the energy and have the muscles that they need to swim around. A lot of sharks, not all sharks, but a lot of sharks need to move in order to breathe, like these sharks that you see swimming around over here. So you'd have to give them space, right? I mentioned how big it is. So I think, can you keep a shark as a pet? physically, you could, but should you, right? So sharks are a protected species. Many shark species are, so I do not recommend keeping sharks as pets. Uh, now, Jove wants to know, do clownfish swim around their anemone or just go inside them? Great question. Let's go ahead and see if we can see a photo or a video uh, of a clownfish and an anemone or in a, yeah, 
We got a we got a picture. Okay, so here's a clownfish and another clownfish and another clownfish, right? And they're inside their anemone right now. But this one, as you can see, is kind of coming out of it. So they have a little territory that uh, kind of extends around their anemone as well. They use the anemone to, to hide and protect themselves with, uh, but they have to go out and get food and stuff. So they'll swim outside of their anemone. That was a really great question. I love the thoughtful um, questions that you all sent in. We'd love to have more of them throughout the rest of the programs today. Come back and join us at 11 o'clock. We're going to be talking about food webs and exploring uh, the different things that animals in the ocean might eat. So come hang out with us. Uh, again, we'd love to have you participate. Get those phones ready. And we'll see you at 11. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much. Don't forget to send in your pictures.